Diana have received two pretty major updates. One I would just call a nerf, if you take 12 heat damage or greater from a single source, you will actually light a Diana on fire, and these fire stacks increase for every single application that, well, gets applied, and it can do a lot of damage very, very quickly. Next is the more major feature, Diana Nymphs. Diana Nymphs are actually your living organs. When a Diana dies or is gibbed through any means, three Nymphs will pop out. If you're in a dead state, you can get an action on the side that says gib yourself, which is split apart into three nymphs. As soon as you press that or are gibbed in any other way, you will come out as a Diana nymph. So there is the brain, which is the one you'll be playing as, the stomach, and the lungs. The stomach and lungs are AI controlled, and the brain is, well, you. You are still yourself, but you're just, well, basically a helpless version of yourself. After 10 minutes of survival, you can reform into a random Diana with a different name, but you're still the same person, so you have the same mind. So if you're a Syndicate agent, even if you become a new Diana, you'll still have the same brain, same mind, you'll still have the same objectives. So hopefully that's clear. And there's not really much else mechanically about the Nymphs. As of right now, they can't open doors. I believe that is changing, so that'll probably be changed by the time you watch this or soon after watching this. Uh, they actually can talk right now, so the brain can distinguish itself and say whoever they want to be. They are only labeled as Diana Nymph, though, so there could be some very interesting roleplay scenarios that come out from this. Oh, I nearly forgot. The Diana Nymphs, if they are to die, do actually drop the organs, so even if you do get gibbed as a Diana Nymph, you do have a chance of Borgification. Botany has received some changes for plant clippers. You actually can't plant the seed that has just been grown. You'll get a message saying the plant hasn't grown enough to take a sample. Seeds from sample plants now also inherit the sample plant's health, so daisy chaining one seed massively uh, isn't as possible anymore. So this really does slow down mass botany production, and you're going to have to make use of the seed extractor more often than you did before, and possibly even have to purchase seeds more often than before. Death nettles have been nerfed pretty significantly. They now only inject two units at a time, instead of six. Death nettle still seems to pierce armor regardless of what they're wearing, so I'm not entirely sure if it, it was reverted and I just didn't see it in a changelog or it just doesn't work correctly. But either way, Death Endle still passes through armor. So Death Endle's still a great weapon. It just doesn't do the 80 damage plus that you could make it do before. Extremely creepy Shadow Anomaly has been added to the game. It is actually the least harmful anomaly in the game, despite how scary it looks. The only real harm that the Shadow Anomaly can actually cause is in the form of shadow rifts that will appear inside of the darkness. And all those do when you step on them is teleport you a short distance randomly. So I guess it could throw you into space and there's a chance it could clip you into something and you could suffocate because of that. Dealing with the shadow anomaly is really easy. Science can always just print flashes, and one use of a flash standing dead center of the anomaly will take care of all of the shadows, the portals, and whatnot. There are these shadow rocks left behind, but they're completely just cosmetic. You can you can crowbar them to get rid of them, or just leave them. It doesn't matter. They can also sometimes spawn pink crystals, which are just, again, for cosmetics. You can make pink crystal lights out of them. They can sometimes spawn a shadow cat, which, again, is not a lethal mob. It's basically just a ghost cat. And when it's super criticals, it just spreads shadow across the station and a few portals. So as long as you're careful around it and not letting it plume up entire hallways... Uh, you could practically keep this one forever, so scientists, as creepy as it is, probably really enjoy Shadow Anomalies. Remote signalers now have a capacity on their range. Normal remote signalers can only signal to 15 meters, aka 15 tiles, and advanced remote signalers can go up to 50 meters. Both remote signalers are actually unlocked from the same technology, the advanced remote signaler is just a little bit more expensive, so I guess in terms of being able to make which one, you probably want to make the advanced remote signaler when you can. Extra range is pretty useful, but this will definitely limit long range bombings, but it will still be great at just tossing C4 underneath someone in debt and eating it right away. The bottles with lids on them can actually be open and closed now. So if I pick it up and press C, I could open it, and if I put it back down or just do it in my hand, right click it, you can actually close the lid and you can even see the sprite change. So you can do this on bottles to prevent tampering. Stacks of glass will actually drop the proper amount of shards now, rather than having to be forced to split them into individuals to save on glass shards. Uh, it can get pretty crazy. You can make a literal pile of glass pretty quickly. The microwave has received some lovely quality of life. The UI looks better, and the microwave will actually now count down how much time is left in the cook, and it even has this yellow indicator indicating that it is on and running in case you can't hear it, or see that the microwave itself is on.
The detective will now spawn with an evidence marker box, which are labeled from 1 to 9, so you can mark up to 9 different points of interest at a crime scene. Maybe not mechanically all that useful, but A, it could let people know that you are actively investigating a scene, so people will, might prevent people from tampering with it, and B, it just looks cool and is great for roleplay. All our projectors can now be placed in front of you and not just have to be placed directly on top of you. So you can just click in tiles around you and make a full wall without having to run around in circles. So this is great for hollow fan projectors and great for like the security barriers. The firefighting door remote has been updated to actually allow you to open Atmos doors now. So, I mean, that's where you got them from anyway, so this definitely makes sense. And there are times where the atmospheric problems originate in Atmos, so being able to close off and lock doors remotely is uh, pretty useful for Atmos techs. So that is the last thing I will cover for this week. I want to thank all of our main and contributors for all their awesome work for the game, keeping it up to date, all that good stuff full of life and love, and thank you for watching.